In this problem, we are supposed to compute the flux of the vector field f of x and y and z in the hemisphere, y equal to square root of uh, 25 minus x squared minus z squared, oriented outward as shown in the picture. Um, so basically, let's first of all figure out what uh, the sphere or hemisphere look like. Uh, if I go to power 2, then this is going to be that, and that is if I take the x squared and y squared to the other side, uh, z squared to the other side, I get a sphere of radius 5, and I have to remember y is bigger than or equal to 0 to make it a hemisphere. And um, also, flux is the vector surface integral. Um, now, a lot of times, um, it, uh, one thing to notice is the sphere is not uh, closed. It's just hemisphere, part of the sphere. Um, and I don't know if there is symmetry or not. So basically, I have to do some computation. I can't go uh, revert back to divergence theorem directly. Um, in here, um, what I notice is um, basically that f dot n may be something that I can work with because it looks like f is uh, basically radially outward and n little n is also radially outward so that may actually be something that I can use. Um, so let's compute f dot n. And I'm hoping that from a previous material in, in exam one, we figure this out. Uh, let's talk about uh, g of x and y and z as x squared plus y squared plus z squared. And then uh, this hemisphere is going to be part of the um, basically a level surface of this function. Um, so I'm going to find gradient of g, which is 2x, 2y, and 2z. Then to find little n, I have to find uh, uh, a unit normal in, in, uh, in the direction, outward direction. Gradient is orthogonal to the surface. Gradient of g is orthogonal to the surface, but it's not in unit. Let's check if the orientation is the same that orientation you can check any point in in the first quadrant and see the orientation is okay so all i need to do is to find the magnitude of gradient of g and that is uh, the first one to the first component to power two second component to power two and the third component to power two and a two comes out and square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared in this case, I know, because it's a sphere, this square root is going to be 5, uh, radius of that sphere. So gradient of g over magnitude of gradient of g, which is the little n, is going to be uh, 2x divided by 10, 2y divided by 10, and 2z divided by 10, which is x fifth, y fifth, and z fifth. Okay, I found the little n, and and I still have the um, the vector field. So let's compute x, y, and z dot. Because x squared plus y squared uh, plus z squared is equal to 25, this is going to be ending up to be 5. So I found f dot n instead of the other formula that I use, which is um, the double integral of f capital N dA over s, I'm going to use this formula again, f dot n ds without the air on top over s. Uh, and so this is going to be the double integral of 5 ds over s. Oh, actually, at this point, 
um, I may have to uh, parameterize and compute this, which parameterization is not going to be too difficult because I already know g in this case is um, rho, which is phi, cosine theta sine phi, rho sine theta sine phi, and rho cosine phi. And then I know that um, g sub theta plus g sub phi, magnitude of that is just the Jacobian. Therefore, computing this directly is not too bad. And also, I know over here, because it's sem uh, semi-sphere, uh, theta is going to run between 0 and pi, because it's only um, the and then for y bigger than 0, and phi is between 0 and pi. So I can set this up as 0 to pi, 0 to pi, um, and 25 sine of phi, d phi d theta. But also, I know that um, conceptually, this is just 5 times the surface area of the uh, hemisphere. That is 5 times surface area of the sphere is this. Surface area of hemisphere is half of that. And so these two answers should be the same thing.